What's up, y'all? It's your boy Clarence NYC, your favorite bearded king. Your dick. And we're back with another reaction. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Your dick. Um, today we have, it's another late night, about 3 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I'm up. You know what I'm saying? I've been working on my clothes all day. But late night, we're doing these reactions. You know what I'm saying? Last night, um, as y'all already probably heard the story about Lil TJ being seen with Lala and Lala and Ruby going at it or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever their problem is, you know what I'm saying? Lala made a video last night. I didn't get to react to it because I reacted to the Fredo DDG stuff, but they uh she dropped a video last night and we're about to get right into it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you smash that like button, make sure you leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe. You dig. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you subscribe. It's very important. Let's get right into it though, because this is a long video, so let's not even play any games. Alright guys, so I'm really just going to jump straight into this. And the first thing I just want to say is that you can judge someone all you want and have opinions on situations that you don't have the facts to and don't know everything about. And you have the right to do that because we're human and when we see a situation, we judge it. Even though we don't know the full Alright, so what makes this situation a little tricky is because if you guys don't know, I know you guys probably do know. But uh, Lala was seen with Lil TJ, but Lil TJ used to talk to Ruby and Ruby and Lala are friends. So it's just a whole problem, you know what I'm saying? It was a whole situation or a whole misunderstanding or whatever. So I guess this video is going to clarify more what happened, you know what I'm saying? So. Sorry. Um, but... The point is, the internet and real life don't always align. And the only reason I'm going to explain fact. myself today is because I do have a brand and my character is being tested. And normally, I wouldn't even address situations because if I know the truth and I know my own integrity, I don't owe an explanation to anybody. I'd be but feeling like, like that. I, said, my character is being I respect tested. that. I also didn't want to immediately say anything or react off impulse because a lot of you guys like, you're being silent, you just don't care. It's not even that. I just don't have anything to go back and forth about on the internet. So this is why I'm going to make the video and that's it. I have a very reserved personality. I'm just naturally not like a talker to be blasting everything. That's just not me. And I'm sorry that that upset some people. So first of all, me and Ruby, we were never genuine friends. And that may come as a shock or surprise to some of you guys. Yeah, because I, like I feel like you. I feel like them two were probably close. Like doors. you only know internet. Well, I, yeah, I don't. Know, I wouldn't know the inside because I don't know clothes. them. That's all you know. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we put but out there. So like just on the so internet, it just seems like, like they were close. That's it's crazy. Told to you. But overall, the literal truth is that me and Ruby were never real, genuine friends, and we just gave this internet persona of sisters and besties because. It looks good, and honestly, it was established on her end to me that that's all she wanted, um, and that she didn't, she didn't really mess with me. And I'm gonna get into like how I actually found that out. But all right, so to jump back, probably almost a year ago, not quite, but almost a year ago, um, I was with Ruby at her house in Atlanta. I think I was staying there. Um, and if y'all know, I used to live in Atlanta. That's where I met Ruby, and that's where I went to high school. So I was staying at her house in Atlanta and we got into an argument about something that had nothing to do with me and her personally, but it triggered her to like just expose her true feelings towards me. And she just ended up telling me like, honestly, I've been holding this in for as long as we've been friends. So she told me and straight up looked me in the eye. There were two other girls there to witness this and said like, you know, I never really messed with you. We're not genuine friends, and I don't look at you in that way, and I don't want to be friends anymore. And yo, yo, what, what, what would you do if someone told you that? Like, I felt like I would, like, if half of me would want to fight, and then half of me would want to, like, like, go to the bathroom and cry. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, nigga. Like, so you've been chilling with me just because, like, what? Like, what? That's crazy. I was like, what? Like, I was literally sitting there so confused. I was, like, asking her questions. Like, why wouldn't you tell me this sooner? Like, I don't understand why you would just sit there and fake a friendship with me. Like, that's weird. And it's hurtful. Because I really, I felt the opposite. I'm like, damn, this is my, this is my sister. Like, I feel like we created a bond and we overcame a lot. 
So I thought we were real friends. And from the jump, everyone would tell me, like, watch out. She doesn't have the same intentions. This, that, and the third. But I don't listen to people because I'm hard-headed, yes. But I also don't just judge someone based off what I'm told. I like to experience it firsthand. And then if the outcome... You know, it's bad and people prove me right, then so be it. But I would never just, like, not mess with someone because things were told to me about them and et cetera. But, yeah, so she just basically told me that. And she's like, the reason that I've held this in, and she's like, yeah, I, I know that I'm fake for it. But the reason that I've held this in is because my label told me that it was a good look and a good idea for us to have this little public friendship and bestie shit because you're popping, you're a pretty girl, and I need to be around that. And she straight up told me that. She's like, I need to be around a girl like you. That doesn't sound too like that real. And I don't know. I'm gonna still like Someone would say that you like the label. Or anything, but just in real life, it's just not, you know, it's not that. I literally left her house. How you keep it that a buck? I went straight to my mom's house. She told me like, you know, this girl, you've been seeing the signs. From other incidents prior and this girl showed you her true colors so now you gotta make a decision because my mom just being a mom was like i'm pretty sure y'all are gonna become cool again and i know how you are and you either have to you have to have to know what it is and accept that and don't put your feelings in it or move on and dead the friendship because you she just straight up told you that you guys aren't genuine friends so what you know what's the point in continuing to be around someone that feels like that towards you and I literally was so hurt by this, y'all, for weeks. Um, me and Ruby didn't speak for probably like two months. And then I don't even know, I don't even know how we reconnected, but she ended up reaching out to me randomly, I think, while she was in LA to hang out or something. And I just Yo, this is crazy. I didn't bring anything I'm up. Telling you, that's one thing about LA. LA is like, that's where that should be happening. People just be around you just because like who you are or what you what you could bring them or what you or what status you bring them up to or who people think they are when they're with you like it's weird in LA mo that's a, that's one of the reasons why like Atlanta's a little more homey like you know what I mean like the niggas don't mess with you niggas don't really mess with you I mean like you stay over there I stay over here LA's so not like it, that. We never discussed the situation. You'll be a biggest again, hater like day, right next to you. Never discussed it. It was just like a race like nothing happened but from that point i knew like look i gotta be smarter this time if i'm gonna still hang around her and be friends with her just know what it is know how she is and don't put my feelings in it and don't take everything personally because you're just gonna keep getting hurt and i'm typically the one in any argument we got into or any little thing to always be trying to mend it apologize even if i'm on the wrong just be like look like i love you Whatever, whatever. I'm always that person. And so I'm just at a point where I'm like, I don't owe that to anyone when they don't have my best interests. And when it's just one-sided, I don't owe that to anyone. I'm tired of apologizing. I'm tired of continuing a fake friendship and being around people that don't really care about me. Like, I'm just tired of it. So, so yeah, basically friendship? after that, I had seen her true colors and I just told myself to proceed with caution and just be aware because you know, you just can't trust people. You can't put your feelings in everything too much. Everyone isn't the same. That's just the reality of life. And I'm at the point where I'm I'm fine with that. I can accept that. And you guys are probably wondering, like, what made her feel that way? And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be honest. So what all stems from that is how we became friends initially. And some of you might know. Some of you may not. I'm not going to even say names aside from me and Ruby's because this isn't about other people, but you guys need to know all the facts to understand like my point of view and why I did what I did. So the way we became friends was through a guy that we were both messing with. So I was about 17 and I didn't really keep up with that world. I didn't really get in tune with like industry stuff and just all those little things till I moved to LA. So at the time, I think I was like a junior or senior in high school. My mom raised me very strict, like never got to go out the house to really do anything. So when I met him, I actually met him through a mutual friend. Um, and we just kind of vibed, I started hanging out with him. I ended up kind of on and off talking to him for years. Me and Ruby didn't really like each other because she found out that I was messing with him and she even messaged me at the time like, oh, do you know who I'm dating? Whatever, I'm like, no, I don't. And then she's like, oh, well, cause I posted a picture in his sweatshirt. 
So I clearly had no idea. If I don't know you personally, I'm not going to keep up with your relationship. I'm just not. And the reality is that I was 17. Did I care? No. Of course, guys are going to lie to you and tell you that they're single and you're the only one and this and this. Yeah, I believed him. I was naive and I was 17. So, whatever. Fast forward. Young and dumb. We kind of just Young had this and little, dumb. I wouldn't even say deep. <laughs> we just. Yo, like I'm like winded, like mom. Other, it's late as hell, around. mom. It's gonna be the last um, reaction of this guy. And so we eventually both just weren't we weren't messing with him at all anymore. And she was being managed by someone that was kind of trying to manage me as well. And they were making a proposal to me. We had met once before to discuss it, and then the second time, he had told me like Ruby was kind of reaching out to me on his behalf as well and she was trying to hang out and I was skeptical about it at first and anyone that was friends with me at the time couldn't vouch for this but I would tell them and they're like bro like be careful that's a little weird that she's trying to just be besties and stuff considering like the common factor and I felt like is she trying to set me up or is she doing this to like get closer to me so that I don't talk to him or to find out my business I was just very like unsure so the first few times she tried to hang out I didn't like follow through and then I think we finally hung out and then after that there was a time that we met up with the guy that was eventually managing both of us and he sat us down knowing the situation and he's like look y'all both want to make money right at the time we both really weren't making money I worked like a regular job at the mall whatever and he's like you know y'all both want to make money y'all both have potential and he's like I don't think you should have this beef over a guy that first of all doesn't care about either of y'all clearly is messing with tons of other girls he's like you guys don't have to really like each other but you could at least make money together and you know play it cool just to make money together he's like but you don't really have to be friends you don't really have to like each other so we kind of like awkwardly agreed to that and then we were just around each other a lot more because we had the same manager um, and then there was like other personal things that happened. So I feel like we kind of got closer because we bonded on stuff that really we couldn't relate to with anyone else or talk about with anyone else. So that's kind of what made me feel like, oh, damn, like this girl really turned into like. Yeah, that really, really happens to only girls. Like, I feel like that really does only happen to girls. Like, how do you beef with a joint and then y'all become and then you're open enough and vulnerable enough to like become friends with the joint? Like. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's him. Like, me and you is beefing. Like, we don't have to be, like, on, on, or oh, I see you, we fight in terms, but I don't think I could ever be cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say ever, because I just, you never know, but I don't know. As friend, because we just bonded on a lot of stuff, some really deep shit. So, that's kind of how everything started, but now I'm realizing, now that I'm older and I'm wiser, I'm just realizing, like, which maybe it worked out for a lot of people, but I could never do that again. You cannot base a friendship off a guy if both parties are not secure in themselves. And it was later revealed, which I don't even think was a secret because she would still say it to people, but she was still in love with him. And it bothered her just knowing, like, you know, just knowing we both messed with him. Um, the main thing that I think triggered her when she told to me was that me and him were still cool. After all of that, we were still cool. We didn't talk to <coughs> him like that anymore, but he would hit me from time to time, check in. I would run into him at events, and I would tell Ruby every single time, like, so-and-so hit me, or I just saw them at this place. Every single time I would tell her, because I felt like I should let her know, right? We're friends now. I'm not going to be weird and sneaky, and I wasn't sneaking around to hang with him, but I'm going to let her know if he texts me, or if I see him at this place and we have a conversation, because we didn't end on a negative note. But they did. They ended on a very, very bad toxic note. Um, and all the times that I would tell her, she would never express to me that it bothered her until, you know, later on when she really revealed everything. She was like, yeah, I held all this in and I should have spoke up. But she told me, like, she just felt like it was something without saying that I should know. And I agree, you know, and I later apologized. Like, I didn't think about it that way. And... I probably should have just completely cut ties, not even been cordial with him. I just felt like, damn, he didn't do anything to me personally, and I knew him and had a separate relationship with him before I knew you. So it's like, it just put me in an awkward situation, but I definitely learned from that. And from that point on, I never, ever responded to him again. Never anything. Yeah, so...
unified and tried to get social security this is, this and Medicare is for decades. Interesting. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I spent social security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicare. Come on, Biden, man. Come on, all this Trump. Biden shit. So I, I made that very apparent to her and sure. I really was bothering her on the inside. And I feel like that's why communication is so important. And if you really have a true friendship, be honest with them to avoid situations like this. Because that could have saved me a long ass time from being friends with someone that really didn't feel the same way and secretly disliked me. I could have saved a lot of time from that. So, all right. So fast forward to recent events. I was hit up by multiple casting agents to do the Mood Swings music video, which, if you don't know, it's the Pop Smoke featuring Lil TJ song. So, I was hit up to do it, emails, messages, all that. He did ask me personally as well, but I was hit by actual casting people too. So, the first thing I did was I called Ruby and I told her and I sent her screenshots of the emails I got and the text messages I got asking me about it. And I was like hey like do you mind if i did this or would it be weird and if so i won't do it but i just want to know because it's a big song they're paying me a lot whatever so she straight up told me like oh my god that's so cool i would be a bad person to tell you not to do that and i didn't have to ask her permission per se i'm grown i can make my own decisions but i just felt like because of the public situation that happened with them that was embarrassing for her i owed her just at least to ask and just to let her know so i asked and she told me that it was fine with her and she literally went on to be like if i was you i would do it and she's like it's not like it's just a random song like i think this is good for you and you should do it so i'm like okay cool still didn't confirm with the casting people yet some like days went on probably like a day or two actually and i called her again i'm like i just want to make sure 100 percent you're fine with it before i tell them i can do this and she persisted to push it and encourage it and say like yes you should do it like i promise you i don't feel any type of way i would do the same thing i asked her a third time you guys a third time three times and she said the same thing still encouraged it still was all happy go lucky about it i should do it yeah, so after asking multiple times, I confirmed with them and I didn't see the issue. And another reason why I even considered it, because I know people are like, well, why would you even want to do that when someone publicly embarrassed your friend? Like I said at the beginning of this video, the internet and real life are two different things. I know it's the perception that they had this big issue and all that, but the truth is they were so cool after that. And we all three hung out like, they were cool. Um, yeah, so anyways, a little bit back, probably so like a few months ago, <clears throat> Ruby called me and was like, hey, um, TJ is doing this video for a sex song. She didn't tell me the name at the time. I didn't actually know any details, but the video since then came out with a different girl. So if you want to go back and look, whatever, to reference what I'm saying, it's called Sex Sounds. And she told me, um, yeah, she told me, like, he's doing a video, he's filming it in Jamaica, and he needs a lead girl, and I think you should do it. But then I never followed through, because it was very last minute, and I was like, damn, I'm not about to go to a whole different country for someone that I don't know. And I didn't even know the treatment, I didn't know any. So long ass video, yeah. Wish I had some coffee or something, man. Gatorade. Get me back in the game, coach. But if you go back and look, the video was 10 times more intimate than Mood Swings was. If you go from there to now for Mood Swings, why would I think that this would be an issue? You know, like she put that in my head initially. That was the biggest thing. After I asked about the Mood Swings video, I even told her, like, if you don't want me to do it, I won't do it. She never spoke up or said otherwise. And, you know, this video in comparison to the other one she asked me to do was in a much more professional setting. It was just like, I wouldn't have seen the issue because of that. And I still asked multiple times. So now, you know, the video is said and done. I call her, I tell her about it. And everything is still on my end under my impression. Cool, right? So then she texts me, I think, like the next day randomly and, and just says, so... She said, love you as a sis, because we've been through a lot, but not going to lie, I can't F with you anymore. And I said, I can't say I didn't see this coming, but I just wish you could at least be honest with me about how you feel when I asked. But I was probably being selfish, so I'm sorry if I hurt you along the way. 
And that was the truth because I asked her prior. She said she was fine with it. So if you weren't, you should have spoken up. But now it's too late. The video is said and done. So it's like you're telling me, oh, I can't F with you anymore. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm not gonna sit there and beg for French for a friendship. I was kind of just at peace with myself. Like, I'm not surprised, that's how she is. And I'm starting to think she probably was testing me or something. But I asked so many times that you had a chance to really- I don't like when people test me. Don't and test me. The problem is communication. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. Like, oh, I was just testing you. Like, nah, nigga, don't do you know? that. Like, don't everything at once. And I'm like, damn, like, speak up. If that's how you feel, say that. I don't ever hold back. I'm at the point where I'm happy with myself and I'm just going to move on. I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling over something that I can't change. And I feel like maybe she thinks that I'm unapologetic or have no remorse on the situation. And I understand how it looks and how it's messed up and how she feels. But with everything involved, you can't really be that upset. And yeah, I told the girl if I would have known it was a problem from the jump, I would not have done it. But you never let me know that. So... It's just a weird situation because Hold on y'all, gotta make sure it lays it. Make sure that boy sleep. She's even said to me, and I think she said it on the internet before, like her and TJ are friends, no ties, like they were never dating. They were never dating. The internet just blows everything out of proportion. We even all three hung out afterwards. So, and had certain conversations and just like, it was just very apparent that that was in the past. They were clearly friends. Like Ruby would talk about guys she wanted or mess with in front of him. It was just like a little play play. Like, I don't know, a little odd, but I'm just saying from my point of view, this is why I didn't feel like I was that in the wrong. But I can understand how it looks, and I'm owning up to that. There was even a point where they were talking, and Ruby was saying how she wanted his friend, and he was like, he wanted me, and it was like this little weird trade, and then he ended up messaging me, and I had showed her, and she was like, I don't care, whatever. Like, it was just a weird situation. Um, I just am only saying that to let y'all know, like, it wasn't deeper, it wasn't like her boyfriend. They really both didn't care. Um, I'm rambling a lot, so I'm probably going to just cut to each of my points in this video. But, basically, after it was established that we were no longer... One of the things popping. you recognize being a professional athlete is that there's this whole ecosystem that... Ha oh, we're going to be in each other's lives. I just was like, you know what, I'm going to move on. And I hung out with him. I did. And we vibed. And it was cool, like shit really moved fast and I didn't want it to be posted and all that to happen. But under the circumstances, you know, things just played out how they did. She was fully aware before the internet was. She was fully aware before I even did the video, before anything got deeper. She was aware and I just want that to be known. I wasn't on any sneaky, weird stuff. I didn't go behind her back. None of that. I truly wish the best for her. I just feel like it was meant for us to exit each other's lives. And that's really the, the reality of this whole situation. Um, I put a lot more effort into our friendship Sorry. and really tried to make My it work. And I think that I accepted a lot and brushed a lot of things she did to me behind closed doors just under the rug because I just really was desperate to have a best friend. And I felt like we did connect on personal things that we had a bond over. But that was it. If you take that out of it, it was a lot of just weird, weird on and off stuff. I've been hearing this for a few months, but even recently from different people, I kept, it kept getting back to me that she was going around saying like, oh, we're, me and her are not real friends. Um, Sorry, I need just, to get some food. Just how she felt, like she didn't really look at me that way and that she's only being around me because it was a good look i'm a pretty girl that's popping and her label encourages it that's what she told several people and they kept coming back to me and telling me one i never addressed it because to be quite honest i knew it was true because she said those exact words to me and looked me in my eyes and when different people were telling me i didn't even tell them that i knew i just kind of was like okay brush it off change the subject but i i knew inside like damn that hurts because it's really true like this isn't someone just trying to create drama 
or rumors like she said those exact words to me like damn just know that there's always two sides of the story Three. and if we ever really had a genuine friendship a lot of lines wouldn't have been crossed from the jump but it was never genuine and it just never was and it's no one's fault but myself because I knew it was. I saw the signs, and I continued to be around her. I continued to take pictures with her, carry on the persona, like, that we're besties. Because, let's be real, it's a good look. Like, we had fan pages. People talked about us being best friends. Like, whatever she said her label said, they were right. Or how she felt. Like, at the end of the day, it is a good look. But I know that I don't want that anymore. Like, I don't want to pretend or have a fake relationship just for the look of it because at the end of the day what's the benefit can i really like confide in this person do they really have my best interest you know bleaching sucks i am obsessed absolutely no sensitivity at all those are things that are way more important than the look of something for social media and i've learned that i learned that the hard way i had to go through all of it and what's so crazy is that after all that after me knowing like this girl doesn't really like me we're not real friends i still went to great lengths to lie for her to save her ass with her relationship just a lot i still lied for her and i still just did a lot of things that i didn't really have to do it's unfortunate how it played out and i didn't want it to play out in this dramatic way but it did i'm just the type of person like i move on from situations i'm not gonna sit here and dwell on it you guys can all hate me and bash me but i'm happy with myself and i know that i'm gonna flourish regardless I don't need the approval of a bunch of people. And I, I have tough skin because, y'all, I'm getting a lot of hate. And, and it's not that, like, I'm okay with it, but I'm just, what can I do? Um, so to really just end this, the way I feel now is that this was being overhyped and made to paint me in a negative light because Ruby doesn't have the best reputation internet-wise. She typically is the one that gets a lot of hate comments and just negative things thrown at her. Um, and I've always been there to defend her and even lie. Like, just do whatever because I don't want, I don't want that. I don't wish that on anyone and now I'm experiencing it. Um, but I kind of feel like the roles are reversed and now this is making her look like, look good and like making me look like the bad guy. And that's good for her because she's typically the one that gets hate. Um, but I'm sure it's being pushed for her to carry this on and it's great publicity She has a project coming out for any artist any artist. I'm, I'm not an artist I don't have a project coming out But for anyone that does I could see how this could be great publicity and it's putting her in a positive spotlight I'm the bad guy now All the hate transferred to me. That is really All that's left to be said. Well, she's getting a lot of hate comments for real. Um, like, like OD. I, I thought like I knew fashion, people were trying to like of the story like now. obviously just so the off the way it looks i just whatever, i'm pretty sure she's getting out, so. like the worst end of the stick that's but. it on my end um i'm gonna move on with my life and like hush od like they flooding her shit isn't okay with that don't keep up with me don't follow me it's very simple All right, y'all, we about to end that right there, man. It's getting late. It's about 4 and 3.43 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And I'm starving. Your boy's starving. Um, man, comment what y'all think. What y'all think is uh, going on here. Like, dude, because you know there's three sides of the We're story. We're only fans in the future. Oh, my God. What I mean, hell? I think you're, like, my closest guy. Oh. Yeah, but, um... Yeah, just comment what you think is gonna happen. Like, what you think happened. You know what I'm saying? We we know her side. Uh, and I, I, I haven't heard from Ruby's side. You know what I'm saying? Let me know if Ruby uh, made a video or even said anything about this video. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Make sure you follow my Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Clarence NYC. Make sure you follow me on Snap, Clarence NYC. You know what I'm saying? Right? Just make sure I don't want y'all following the wrong people. Then I think I'm supposed to scam y'all. Make sure y'all follow those pages, man, on social media. And, of course, follow my Instagram. And I'll holler at y'all. See y'all next video.